All right. Good. Uh, hyperlinks are really important. They are what makes a web a web. This article shows the sy syntax required to make a link and discusses link best practices. What is a hyperlink? Hyperlinks are one of the most ex exciting innovations the web has, has to offer. While they've been a feature of the web since the very beginning, but they are what makes the web a web. They allow us to link our documents to any other document or other resource we want to. We can also link to specific parts of documents and we can make apps available at simple web at a simple web address. Contrast this to native apps which have to be installed and all that business. Just about any web web content can be converted to a link so that when clicked or otherwise activated, it will make the browser go to another web address, URL. And URL stands for Uniform Resource Locator. It's a text string specifying where a resource can be found on the internet. Hmm. Uh, a URL can point to HTML files, text files, images, text documents, video and audio files, and anything else that can live on the web. If the browser doesn't know how to display or handle the file, it will ask you if you want to open the file in which case the duty of opening or handling the file is passed to a suitable native app on the device or download the file, in which case you can try to deal with it later on. The BBC homepage, for example, contains a large number of links to point to not only multiple news stories, but also different areas of the site. Uh, navigation functionality, login re registration pages, user tools, and more. So anatomy of a link. Um, a basic link is created by wrapping the text or other content. See block level links. You want to turn into a link inside of an A element and giving it an href attribute, also known as a hypertext reference or, or target. That will allow, that will contain the web address you want the link to point to. Okay. I had trouble with this a little bit earlier on. Okay, and then, so this is where the link is, and then this is the text that you can click on that takes you to the link. Uh, this gives us the following results. I'm creating a link to the Mozilla homepage, and then I'm guessing this takes you to the Mozilla homepage. Yes, it does take you to the Mozilla homepage. Okay. Adding supporting information with the title attribute. Uh, another attribute you may want to add to your link is title. This is intended to contain supplementary information about the link, such as what kind of information the page contains or other things to be aware of. For example, so you have a paragraph I'm creating a link to, and then inside of that paragraph, you're opening an A tag with an href to the Mozilla page, and the title is the best place to find more information about Mozilla's mission and how to contribute. And then it's uh, all. Yeah. When you hover over it, then you'll see it. Okay. And then you hover over it and it shows all that information. Okay. So this gives us the following result. The title will come up as a tool, as a tool tip when the link is hovered over. Uh, a link title is only revealed on mouse hover, which means that people relying on keyboard controls will have difficulty accessing title information. If a title information is truly important to the usability of the page, then you should present it in a manner that will be accessible to all users by putting it in the regular text. Okay. All right. Active learning. Create, creating your own example link. Active learning time. We'd like you to create an HTML document using your local, okay, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'll just copy their page, I guess, into my browser, and my editor. Um, inside the HTML body, try adding one or more par paragraphs or other types of content you already know about. Turn some other content into links. Include title attributes. Uh, 
I'm just gonna go to alarm it's an generator and paste a bunch of that I don't feel like writing my own stuff like yeah. um, a few elements So I try adding one or more paragraphs about other types of content you already know about. Uh, Remember, you can just put a hash inside of the href, so it just turns into a dead link. Oh. Why is this not working? And then what I'm going to do is a href equal blank um, this and then space it was title equal out computing. Move this over. And then and keep going like this. Wonder if this will work. Um, okay. Save this. Folder. Desktop. And let's go to a book. Page. All right, I have some sort of problem with this. Oh, yeah, I did not close this. Um, computing. Why doesn't this? Oh, whoops. Do not want the title as a link. It does not work. Cool. This is my page. So in computing, it does all this information. And then after that, it goes into here. Nice. <clears throat> okay. Uh, block level. Oh, are you done? 
Yeah, I'm good. Uh, let's see. So as mentioned before, you can turn just about any content into a link, even block level elements. If you had an image you wanted to turn into a link, you can just put the image between the A tags. Okay. So that's IMG, SRC, and stuff like that. Let us try that. So basically all we're changing is, so, you know what? Oh wait, no, but I would have to download images. Yeah, I'm just gonna copy a link. Let's choose this Dell Inspiron. And then, wow, that is a terrible choice. Uh, Walmart, do Wikipedia. That seems like a good choice. That's it. Sure. Um, copy. Then, sure. Okay. Let's take that and then instead, we're going to do an image. So, IMG. SRC equal this. Uh, okay, you can put a title on the uh, images as well. Oh yeah, you can, yeah. Wait, but wouldn't that confuse the... So... Hmm. How will we have two titles on there then? What do you mean? I just have one title on my on my image. Cause the link also has a title, right? Mm. So let's try. Okay, let me try something. And then title. Uh, you make the you make the image uh, a link, and you give the image a title, not the link itself. Okay, but then when you hover over it, which which image which title does it give you? This is a computer. Okay, so this overrides the uh the links title. Hmm. Oh I don't have a link title actually and that's why that's what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah, I just have my image title. Okay. okay. So I, yeah, so when I originally had just the image and I'd hover over it, it would give me the link title. And then when I gave the image a title and I hovered over it, it started to just give me the, the image title. Oh, uh, okay. okay. So I guess it just overrides whatever is last, I guess. Okay, cool. So in computer, a hyperlink. All right, sweet. Cool. Hey, for the image, which uh, which attribute did you use to give it a title? For the image, I just put um, title equals and then the title mm. inside you're, of the image tag. Here they're using the uh, alt tag. Uh, yeah, the alt is just a descriptor of the image. It doesn't actually show up when you hover over it. Oh, that doesn't show up. Yeah, it doesn't show up. Like, here, oh. I'll remove my title. Oh, th that's the one where if the image doesn't show up, it just gives it a description. Oh, that's right. Okay. Okay. True, true, true. It's all coming back to me. Uh, okay, so... Do you want to read this part? Sure. <clears throat> a quick primer on URLs and paths. Fully understand link targets, you need to understand URLs and file paths. 
this section gives you the information you need to achieve this. A URL or uniform resource locator is a simple string of text that defines where something is located on the web. For example, Mozilla's English homepage is located at, gives you the link, mozilla.org. URLs use paths to find files. Paths specify where in the file system the file you are interested in is located. Let's look at a simple example of a directory structure. See the creating hyperlinks directory. Uh, oh, the root of this directory structure is called creating hyperlinks. When working locally with a website, you will have one directly di directory that the whole site goes inside. Inside the root, we have a index.html file and a context.html file. In a real website, index.html will be our home page or landing page, a web page that serves as the entry point for a website or a particular section of a website. There are also two directories inside our root, PDFs and projects. These each have a single file inside them, a PDF and an index.html file. Respectively, note how you can quite happily have two index.html files in one project as long as they are in different locations in the file system. Many websites do. The second index.html would perhaps be the main landing page for the project-related information. Mm. Same directory. If you want to include a hyperlink inside index.html, the top level index.html pointing to context.html, you would just need to specify the file name of the file you want to link to as it is in the same directory as the current file. So the URL would use is context.html. So we have a paragraph and an anchor, which href context.html. Mm. Do you remember the project from yesterday, the one with the, the rooms? Oh yeah, I think that- uses That's this. probably how they do it. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, moving down in subdirectories. If you wanted to include a hyperlink inside index.html, the top one, pointing to projects, <coughs> Jesus, pointing to projects index.html, you would need to go down into the projects directory before indicating the file you want to link to. This is done by specifying, specifying the directory's name, then a forward slash, then the name of the file. So the URL you would use is projects forward slash index.html. Mm. Okay. Moving back up into parent directories. If you wanted to include a hyperlink inside projects.index.html, pointing to PDFs, projectbrief.pdf, you'd have to go up a directory level, then back down in, into the PDF directory. Go up a directory is indicated using two dots. So the URL you would use is dot dot pdfs projects brief dot pdf. Mm. You can combine multiple instances of these features into complex URLs if needed. Uh, okay. Okay. True. Um, so document fragmentation uh, fragments. It is possible to link to a specific part of an HTML document known as a document fragment rather than just the top of the document. To do this, you first have to assign an ID attribute to the element you want to link to. It normally yeah, makes sense. <clears throat> huh? You want to try um, what we just learned here? Let's see if we can make a multi page uh, website then. Yeah, sure. You can make a link and then it goes to another page. Okay. Well, I'll try that out. Mm, let's see PDFs. Projects, let's see index. Oh, they have already done for you. They do? No. In the GitHub page. Oh, okay. Let's, I guess let's make our own actually. Yeah, let's make our own just for practice. 
All right. How do I move this? There we go. Uh, so we have hyperlink. Okay, so here's what's going to happen. Hyperlink and then touch. Actually, um, no. and then we're going to make directory called random info and then CD and then watch uh, HTML. Okay. So this title name is going to be landing page, and then it's going to be in the head, name, blah, 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 all that stuff. So body, so Website and then P uh, equal quotation marks. It's going to be so it's in the same place. Dot HTML. And learn about hyperlink. HTML. Wow, I did it. You got multi page websites. <laughs> Click here and then let's do one more. P. To learn about random information, click a href equal, and then it's going to be random underscore info hyphen random HTML and title. Random information. And then we're going to close this here. And then let's go to random info. Have HTML. Uh, random stuff. Which one? This is a page on random things. All right. So let's try this out. Hyperlink. Go to the index page. To learn about hyperlinks, click here. This is my page on hyperlinks. And to learn about random info, click here. All right, sweet. Cool. This is a lot simpler than I thought it would be. No, honestly. Once you kind of like start learning the mechanics of it, it's like, oh, that's how they did it. 
But I guess like hindsight is a lot easier than making this stuff. Um, to move, this is the one I didn't get. So to move back up into parent directories, if you want to include a hyperlink inside that points to here, you'd have to go up a directory and then back down to the PDF directory. Go up a yeah. directory is indicated using the two dots. Yeah, that's what I did. I had a next uh, a next button on my main page and a previous button on my mm -hmm. second one. So on random, let's go, let's try this. Back to, and then we'll do A, href and then we'll do dot dot slash oh okay and it actually gives the information for you sweet um title equal quotation marks um let's see what pops up this is a page, no, not this one. So landing page, random information to go back home. Okay, sweet, that works. Cool. Uh, okay, so document fragment. Rather than just to the top of the document to do this, you have, oh yeah, it is possible to link to a specific part of the HTML rather than just to the top of the document to do this. You first have to assign an ID attribute to the element you want to link to. It normally makes sense to link to a specific heading. So this would look something like this. So H2 ID mailing address. Oh, I see. Okay. This is within the web page. So yeah, if you make a link, you can have a link so it scrolls down to a specific section, I guess. Uh -huh. That'd be interesting. Then, to link that specific ID, you'd include it at the end of the URL preceded by the hash pound symbol, for example. Want to write us a letter? Use our contacts, href contact.html mailing address. Oh, so this is even in different, uh, in different pages. Yeah, and completely different files. Mm, yeah, so it'll, awesome. it'll link to the the other page, and then it'll scroll down for you. Scroll down to the email address. Oh, okay. You can even use a document of reference on its own link to another part of the same document. Okay, this is what we were talking earlier. So a href mailing address company can be found at the bottom of this page. Okay. So two terms you'll come across on the web are absolute and relative URLs. So absolute URL points to a location defined by its absolute location on the web, including protocol and domain name. For example, if an index.html page is uploaded to a directory called projects that sits on the root of a web server and the website's domain name is example.com page would be example.com slash product project slash index dot html or even just example slash project slash as most web servers look for a landing page such as index.html to load if it's not specified in the url okay that's interesting to know an absolute URL will always point to the same location no matter where it's used. Oh. So relative URL points to location that is relative to the file you are linking from. More like what we looked at in the previous section. For example, if we wanted to link from our example file at the index.html to a PDF file in the same directory, the URL would be the file name, so project brief.pdf. No extra information is needed. If the PDF was available in a subdirectory inside projects called PDF, 
The relative link would be PDF, project, brief, PDF. Equivalent absolute URL would be, okay. So a relative URL will point to different places depending on where the file it is used inside is located. For example, if we moved our index.html file out of projects directory and into the root of the website, the PDF slash project relative will now point to a file located at example slash PDF project briefs dot PDF, not a file located at example slash projects PDF projects briefs dot PDF. Okay. All right. Uh, but of course, time. the location of the projects brief dot PDF file and the PDF folder won't suddenly change because you moved the index file. This will make your link point to the wrong place, so it wouldn't work if clicked on. You need to be careful. Uh, link best practices. There are some basic uh, best practices to follow when writing links. Let's look at these now. Use clear link wording. It's easy to throw links up on your page. That's not enough. We need to make our links accessible to all readers, regardless of their current context and which tools they prefer. For example, screen, re screen reader users like jumping around from link to link on the page and reading links out of context. Search engines use link, link text to index target files. So it is a good idea to include keywords in your link text to effectively describe what is being linked to. Visual readers skim over the page rather than reading every word, and their eyes will be drawn to the page features that stand out like links. You will find descriptive link text useful. Let's look at the specific example. Good link text, download Firefox, um, as a, a link, and it's just download Firefox, okay. Bad link text, click here to download Firefox. Mm, okay. Okay. Other tips, don't repeat the URL as part of the link text. URLs look ugly and sound even uglier when a screen reader reads them out letter by letter. Don't say link or links to in the link text, it's just noise. Screen readers tell people there's a link. Visual users will know will also know there's a link because links are generally styled in a different color and underlined. This convention generally shouldn't be broken down as users are so used to it. Keep your link label as short as possible. Long links especially annoy screen readers who have to hear the whole thing out. Uh, minimize instances where multiple copies of the same text are linked to a different place. This can cause problems for screen readers, screen reader users who will often bring up a list of links out of context. Several links all labeled click here, click here, click here would be confusing. Mm. Um, use relative links wherever possible. From the description above, you might think that it is a good idea to use absolute links all the time. After all, they don't break when a page is moved like relative links. However, you should use relative links whenever possible when linking to other locations within the same website. When linking to another website, you will need to use an absolute link. For a start, it is e a lot easier to scan your code. Relative URLs are generally a lot shorter than absolute URLs, which makes reading code much easier. Second, it is more efficient to use relative URLs wherever possible. When you use an absolute URL, the browser starts by looking up the real location of, a, of the server on the domain name system, DNS. Then it goes to that server and finds the file that is being requested. With a relative URL, on the other hand, the browser just looks up the file that it is being requested on the same server. So if you use absolute URLs where relatively URLs would do, you're constantly making your browsers do extra work, meaning that it will be perform less efficiently. So linking to non-HTML resources, leave clear signposts. 
So when you're linking to resources that will be downloaded, like a PDF or Word document, or streamed, like a video or audio, or has another potentially unexpected effect, opens a pop-up window or loads a flash movie, you should add a clear wording to reduce any confusion. It can be quite annoying, for example, if you're on a low bandwidth connection, click a link and then multiple megabyte downloads uh, start unexpectedly. If you haven't got the Flash player installed, click a link and then suddenly get taken to a page that requires Flash. Let's look at examples to see what kind of text can be used here. So this is for a download the sales reports, PDF 10 megabytes, and it links you to a large PDF report. Okay, so I guess that's it. You have to write down or note the size of the, the download. Um, watch video stream opens in separate tab HD quality true you have the target blank that tells it it's an extra tab or a separate tab and then play the car game requires flash example.com slash car game okay uh, use the download attribute when linking to a download when you're linking to a resource that has to be downloaded rather than open in a browser, you can use the download attribute to provide a default save file name. Here's an example with the download link to the latest Windows version of Firefox. Mm, I see. So what would, what would this open, basically? Um, it would open a new page, and it'll... Uh and your browser will ask if you want to download this. Really? So it wouldn't just like... Uh, Usually if you open a new page yeah. and it's a file, it'll start downloading. No, it doesn't even open the page. It just downloads, starts downloading it automatically. Oh. Uh, I guess if you want to have a new page, you could add the blank target thing um, into the href attribute. I think, the tar I think that when you have the download attribute, it just automatically starts the installer. Okay. Let's try the let's try adding the blank and see what happens. Now let's do it before. Oh yeah, so it opens a new that? blank and then it automatically closes it and then Firefox just starts downloading. Okay. That's cool. Okay, so I guess that's like not even, uh, you don't even have to open the page at that point. That's cool. So active learning, creating a navigation menu. Oh, this is what we literally just did. <laughs> Basically. So for this exercise, we'd like- I'm guessing, to... guessing this is more clean though. Yeah, yeah it looks better. Okay. So for this exercise, we'd like you to link some pages together with the navigation menu to create a multi-page website. This is one common way in which a website is created. The same page structure is used on every page including the same navigation menu. So when the links are clicked, it gives the impression that you're staying in the same place and different content is being brought up. If you need to make local copies of the following four pages and all the same directory, also see the navigation menu, start directory for a full file listing. You should add an unordered list to indicate in the indicated places on one page containing the names of the pages to link to. A navigation menu is usually just a link of links, so this is semantically okay. Uh, turn each page name into a link to that page. Copy the navigation menu across each page. On each page, remove just the link to that same page. It is confusing and pointless for a page to include a link to itself. And the lack of a link acts as a good visual reminder of what page you're on. Okay. So, do you want to make this from scratch, or? I'm just going to edit the one that I already had. Okay, yeah. Delete it. 
Mm. Right. So this is gonna be welcome. So let's just do home page. How do you rename a directory or file with uh, commands, do you know? Uh, that's a good question, I don't know actually. I guess I'll look it up. Okay. So we are going to have, what did they want? Home pictures, projects, and social. So we're going to have an unordered list. So unordered. Oh, OK. Just R-E-N space, whatever the file, file name is, and then space, whatever you want to rename it to. OK, that's sweet. R E M, so R E N as in rename. <clears throat> so list elements. Um, equal. So this is going to be on page five. And this is going to be pictures.html. Oh, and bash, it would be MV to uh, rename stuff. MV to rename? Yeah, MV. Uh -huh. I think what it does is it deletes the directory you told it to and then makes a new directory and moves everything over and just renames it in instead of renaming the file. MV. Okay, so I guess that stands for move? Something like that, yeah. Projects and Is um, hyperlink. So we're actually, I'm actually going to remove this already. So that can be page.
Uh, and then we are going to okay. And touch. Okay, create three. And what we're gonna do? Pictures. Uh, the only difference is pictures. for some reason I keep spelling pictures wrong. Copy and paste the word. All right, let's see what pops up when I do this. Is that what they wanted? Welcome to my exciting homepage. Okay, so I'm missing that. Go to pictures, go to pictures, go to projects. Oh, this still says pictures. Oops. Um, pictures. This has to say, and this has to say, follow me at. Out of the head. Or oh, I should link this to my social media. Um, let's go back here. Social project. I thought I saved this. There we go. All right. That was fairly straightforward. I am almost done. Just creating home links.
Oh, I need to dot dot. Okay. Let's try that. Four more after this, or five more in total.